Spring training is well on its way, and so is the World Baseball Classic, which is getting more attention this time than any other time. And some pretty exciting games and some big names are playing, and a few other people who might be big names down the line. I can't think of a bigger name than Justin Latta of Locked On Guardians, who's going to be my guest on this episode of Locked On MLB. You are Locked On MLB. Your daily MLB podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, baseball fans, and welcome to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast. We talk about all of Major League Baseball. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. If you don't believe me, there's my lower third. You call me Sully. I am an Emmy-nominated television producer who has been a baseball podcaster for well over a decade, and we're about to start my fifth season here as a host here of the Locked On Podcast Network here on Locked On MLB. Follow the show at Locked On MLB Pods on Twitter or on Instagram, and you can follow me. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Subscribe to us on YouTube as we're really, really gunning hopefully by the end of this season, to reach 1 billion subscribers. We're several hundred million off on that. So let's let's keep it rolling. And you can also tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB or check out some of the other great shows on the Locked On Podcast Network where it is your team every day. Let's just take one completely at random. Uh, Locked On Guardians, where we are going to climb the ladder with Justin Ladder co-host of Locked On Guardians. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Locked On MLB. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good. I'm excited to chop it up with you about all things baseball, Sully, especially the WBC just getting started. Yeah, and the, well, you and I will talk about the Guardians in the you know as the season progresses because I actually, I'm pretty confident in the Guardians going to this year. I think they're actually going to have a very good year. But do you know what? It's WBC time. And I, you know what I have to say, for those of you who have, were fans of the old Sully Baseball podcast show, where I was merciless on the WBC, I've had some people kind of help turn me around. Um, Allison, the, a.k.a. the infield fly girl, has pointed out a lot of the fun parts of it. I've known many, many people who have attended the games, especially when they played it down the street here at Dodger Stadium or Petco Park. Um, uh, I'm... I'm, I've had I've personally had more interest in this year's WBC, and I'm seeing there's more casual interest. I think of no small reason is some of the star power, and the fact that Trout is playing and some of the other big names are playing sure help it because the first couple of times it was basically glorified spring training games. But I think there's you know this is the you know whichever iteration this is, and it's a problem that I don't know that. But uh, the fact that there there is more interest going on and you're seeing some teams that are, have some interesting compositions um, and, and there seems to be a desire to actually win the darn thing, I think it's making for some interesting baseball being played this spring. It should be. I mean, the energy of the first couple of games were intense. Well, I guess the first game with Netherlands and uh, Cuba wasn't didn't have quite the energy because it was a, a noon game out in Taiwan, but... Uh, the last game that happened, Panama and Chinese Taipei had just crazy stuff going on. You had horns. Cuba had horns. Um, I like the international flair, to be, to be honest with you. That's, yeah. that's what gets me going is they got bands. They got cheers. They got cheerleaders from Chinese Taipei. Like, these guys are having fun. They know how to do it. And I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing the energy all these other countries bring. But I think you got a great point. Team USA, I, I saw a quote today saying, like, you can't show up and treat this like a spring training game. This is if you're committed to doing this, you're committed to playing like it's a playoff game every night. And uh, I think that does make it more exciting to watch like Team USA to have that mentality versus, you know, like you said, a, a glorified spring training. You know, we're seeing, um, <coughs> excuse me, as we're recording this, uh, Australia and Korea are about to play, um, a, you know, a, a game uh, in Korea right now. Uh, and later this evening, uh, Panama is going to be playing the Netherlands. Uh, Panama, as you mentioned, just beat up on 
uh, Chinese Taipei, as I guess we're calling. I, I, I've always would have said Taiwan, but I guess there's reasons we're we're using a different uh, the different moniker there. But they had a big five run inning there that was uh, you know really was the 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 nail in the coffin right there for Chinese ta- uh, Taipei. But uh, you know one of the interesting things that happened in this. So yes, there are major leaguers who are in there. Yes, there are. Uh, players who are big stars of their country. But then you'll have uh, Jadiel Santa Maria, I believe is how you pronounce his name, who was the big star of the game um, in the, uh, uh, the big star for the, uh, um, the Panamanian team. And he was never a major leaguer. He played some years in the Yankee organization, the Braves organization, and um, kind of bounced around, uh, you know, he, he bounced around the minor leagues and has been part of the uh, uh, Panamanian national team. And he, someone like him gets to have a moment in the sun. Someone like him gets to have a moment where they get to be, uh, you know, a name to, to shine in the big in the big moment. And I think that's one of the things that appeals to this, that maybe – I don't know, will this mean another shot of him in the major leagues? Maybe, maybe not, but it does get someone who has been kind of out of the, at least the eye of American. He, he never made the major leagues. He was a minor leaguer in the Yankees and the Braves organization. And look at that. He gets to be a big hero in the WBC. And we're talking about him here on Locked on MLB, which, let's face it, is what every player aspires to be, is to be mentioned by their pal Sully here on Locked on MLB. Who wouldn't? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it is great. You're right. There's a lot of guys that, that haven't had major league success or haven't maybe gotten over to the U S like they're, you know, Cuba. And I think uh, one of the Japan leagues has an agreement to where players can play over there. We saw that last night with um, yeah. Yariel Rodriguez for Cuba. Mm-hmm. Like he was pitching great last night in that first matchup. You've had guys that hadn't been in the majors for a while. Like you want to is playing for Cuba. We haven't seen him in forever. Uh, did not look fantastic. That Cuba lineup really wasn't great, to be honest, even though Netherlands, I don't think, has a whole lot of pitching. But you know, like Jerks on Rope Profar, not sign. I know people know him. He's still playing. Like there are guys. Remember Vladimir Ballantin? Like he was a prospect for a little bit here, and he went over to the, the Chinese leagues, and he was the home run king over there. Like you're seeing guys like that play. Chadwick Tromp, who I think is a, a Braves prospect. We haven't seen a whole lot of like he was playing last night. The Netherlands infield was all shortstops, which, you know, being in Cleveland, I know Cleveland is full of shortstops. And I'm like, man, they are living Cleveland's dream over there because and Drelton Simmons is an all-world defender at short. He's playing, you know, third base. And Dieter Gorius is playing first base. Like, you've got guys all over that are either unheralded or haven't played in the majors in a while or out of the majors that are still going and have great stories from other countries. I just think it's so fun to to see how these teams come together and and – especially the ones that aren't loaded with stars. Well, I think the first couple of times they did the WBC, they the only teams that seemed to care were Japan, Cuba, and Korea because they were filled with players who, in some ways, were using this as an audition for Major League. But it was also, there was a sense of they knew they played at a certain, you know, the Cuban team, probably mo- many of those players could have been Major Leaguers. And you saw a bunch of players in Japan and Korea who were having players who were playing at a major league level, but were playing all out. And you saw the American team, and to a degree, like the the Venezuelan team and the Dominican Republic team, you know, of course they're holding back a little bit, especially if you're a pitcher. You're not gonna be you're not gonna be going nine innings to try to win the WBC if you're under contract with the Mets. So the first bunch of times you saw this, it really was kind of like, okay, let's just wait for you know, you got the sense it's going to be. Why don't we just have a tournament between Cuba and Japan every year? And you know, and and but you, know, you saw the Dominican team play with a lot of you know pride and enthusiasm, and then you saw the American team recently start to do it. So, you know, look at I don't want to be entirely American centric here, but it, it there is a ton more enthusiasm when you see like you know the Chinese Taipei or the the Netherlands have their. You know, their cheerleaders and their horns and everything going. I mean, it does have that carnival feeling. I love that. I mean, I think that's – if you can't in, get into that and enjoy it, I mean, watching watching uh, Panama and Chinese – or Taiwan – or Chinese Taipei playing, like, Chinese Taipei was down, you know, 11 to 1, and they're, they got their 
PA announcer out there fighting the crowd. They had cheerleaders, they had chants. It was almost like a college atmosphere. And I'm like, if you, it kind of reminds me too. I remember watching some of the games uh, early on during the the pandemic when Korea was playing and uh, there wasn't really any other sports on for baseball. Like the atmosphere wasn't quite there for them, but like those crowds just get into it. I think that's what makes it a lot of fun. And um, yeah, I think you're right. Like in the past, there has been an, a, a tendency to hold back. I think like Venezuela has typically underperformed in the world baseball classic because, you know, maybe, maybe they are holding back. And this is the first year I think we're seeing Cuba uh, allowing players who have defected to play. So in the past, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have seen Luis Robert, Yohan Moncada able to play because they defected to the U S but right. you know, now they're allowed to play over there. So that makes it a lot better for them as well, even though they didn't uh, play as well as I thought they're going to play last night. But yeah, there's just a lot of intrigue and a lot of energy and, I, I'll be interested to see what the other other countries do because I don't know. I feel like all the other countries of flair make this fun. And uh, did that work out for Chinese Taipei? Not, not so much, but uh, I guess we'll see how they they finish in the rest of the round robin. Well, in the first the first few times they did it, the it just was the biggest surefire bet that it was just going to be Japan or Cuba, or Japan and and Korea, and it just it lost a little bit of its luster. But now. Some of those teams that look like longer shots for a bet may actually pull it off. And by the way, if you're looking to make any bets, may I recommend you go to FanDuel. The NBA season's at the midway point. It's a perfect time to download the FanDuel app. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. New customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app it's safe, secure, and super easy to use. You can bet on anything from the money line, point scores, th- to three-pointers drain. Plus, FanDuel lets you even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss out the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner, of the National Basketball Association. The copy just said the NBA, but you know, I like to make it sound more. You know, <laughs> some gravitas there. One of the things, um, excuse me, as I itch my nose, my allergies are kicking in, very windy day here in Los Angeles. One of the things that could really happen and make the WBC uh, you know, interesting for very beyond just the, the national pride and and some of the players as we mentioned um it could be an early uh uh sort of a showcase for some of the international players the mlb.com had a great article written by michael claire about the uh um uh jung hu lee who is a left-handed just uh wizard with the bat from the South Korea team. And there's an incredible, there, there's just some great highlights, including one of him basically uh, getting out of the way of an inside pitch, swinging and getting the hit out of it. I mean, he just, he looks like he's one of those people who can just completely control the field, control the bat, kind of in that way that not that he physically looks like this person, but has that sort of, uh, baseball IQ and ability to work the whole field like Tony Gwynn did during his uh, during his peak. Uh, they mentioned that he's he is a sort of a Joe DiMaggio esque. Uh, you know, the fact that DiMaggio had as many home runs as he did strikeouts in his career that it was just impossible to strike out. And this guy looks like someone that he's just going to put the ball in play no matter what. And um, he is part of the Korean team. And uh, they're playing Australia um, right now as we're recording this podcast. <laughs> and, you know, he is someone who could very well be a, uh, um, you know, he could very well be a, a star in the United States um, or a star in Major League Baseball. I don't want to take the Blue Jays out of the running. But, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, like a bowl game or like the Final Four in the NCAA one of the things that could help, um, you know, bring a little more cachet to the WBC for the casual fans is the chance to see some of the, these big stars for the first time. I mean, Ichiro made his first 
appearance for American audiences at the WBC, um, or not Ichiro. Um, oh God. Oh, Otani. Oh, oh, thank you, Otani. Yeah. I, meant, I, you know, I meant to say Otani, and it came <laughs> out as Ichiro. I'm sorry. And and please, please throw throw your your hate email at me. Um, oh. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. But, um, you know, I'm really, I, I would love to see that that happen as well, you know, with the Cuban team and, and with some of the other high profile teams as well. Yeah, like Japan, especially, you're going to have the first time, I think most people are going to see Roki Sasaki, the first time you're going to see uh, Mur- Murakami, who is really good. Like, I think Murakami had a home run off Otani in practice a few, uh, a few yeah. days ago. Like, Otani, I think a few weeks ago, was saying, like, I'm not even the best player on that team. Like there's guys that are better than me on there. And I don't know if, if, Sho- if someone, if Shohei Otani, even if he's being modest, says someone's better than him or as good as him, that's a big deal. Like Shohei Otani is a, is a God for baseball. So if yeah. he's saying someone is better than him and you know, for your Red Sox, you'll get to see uh, Yoshida play a little bit early on. I think uh, is playing left field for um, Matsaki Yoshida. Well, that was the guy, the Red Sox sign, right? He's playing yeah. for team Japan. So I don't know how you're feeling about that with, with your Red Sox and him playing in, Team Japan after that uh, investment in him, but the first time you'll get to see him in you know really competitive games too. Well, you know, look at I'm I'm uh, I'm less worried about that right. Now. Hopefully, you know, he could get hurt just as well in spring training. So I right. mean, we'll we'll see what happens there. Um, uh, obviously, the biggest thing that can happen if this thing works out well. I mean, there's obviously there are teams that are from already baseball crazed countries we mentioned japan we mentioned korea um you know cuba the dominican republic they're all you know they all have teams for countries that are just you know wild about baseball and you know i have all the the teams that sort of qualify for even the pool stage you had canada colombia you know there there are there you know colombia cuba dominican republic mexico puerto rico Panama, Nicaragua. Then you have the Asian teams like China, Chinese Taipei, Japan, South Korea, um, Australia. But I'm fascinated by, um, like, you know, Team Israel, Team Italy, Team, you know, Netherlands includes um, Curaçao as well, but Team Mm -hmm. Britain, Team Czech Republic. Um, You know, I, I would love to see teams you know, stars emerge from some of those teams and maybe, you know, maybe some of them got some uh, exposure being played, you know, being played in front of scouts or everything, but like the best thing could happen to the WBC and the thing that when Bud Selig initiated it was to try to, you know, they, they obviously wanted to have what the world cup is in soccer, what the um, Olympic medal is in hockey and in basketball you're never going to have that in baseball with the Olympics because the summer Olympics are in the middle of the season. No mm-hmm. one's going to shut down the pennant race so you can win a, a gold medal. Um, but I would love to see the a Czech baseball star, a British baseball star, you know, a star from Italy. I mean, my God, if you had a, I've been saying for years, if, if the Red Sox developed a native from Dublin to make the team, you know, you couldn't keep that that jersey on the shelf, even if there was a utility infielder, and it, and I I think that to have to make the national star, we see national stars from other countries when they come to the United, you know, come play in Major League Baseball, whether it's in the Dominican Republic or you know whether it's in you know Mexico or whether it's in Venezuela we've seen it in Korea we've seen it in Japan I'd love to see it expand that to Europe I'd love to be able to see you know the great Italian star and then eventually you know stars from Africa and stars from the Middle East I mean these are you know star from India um, that's what that John Hamm movie was about that underrated John Hamm movie um you know I think that it's uh that's what I'm hoping to see happen here and yeah I think it's going to be a lot of the same faces we see towards the end I would love it if there was, you know, Team Italy or Team Czech, you know, making its way to the majors or making its way to the finals. And that, that's really what it's about, too, is kind of growing the game. Like, everyone's playing here for pride. 
like you said, there are guys with you know multi million dollar contracts who are playing, and it's a it's a bit more of a risk. But you've got the guys who like like the Czech Republic. All of those guys have day jobs, right? You have firefighters and teachers, and that's that's like interesting. Those guys are all going out and playing on a team, and they're going to like have a chance to play Shohei Otani. Like he might be pitching to a guy that's going to go teach like you know fifth grade geography next week. That's wild. You go back and tell your kids that story. But, you know, if you go back and you get a hit off him or you, maybe you beat Japan, or maybe you pull off a win, like think of all the people in your country you can get excited about baseball and and maybe someone, you know, is inspired by that and starts playing because, you know, a lot of other, these countries, their their top sport is soccer or maybe it's uh, – I'm trying to think of the – other. what's the baseball equivalent over there with the, the flat cricket? bat? Cricket, cricket. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's cricket. Maybe maybe they'll try out baseball because they're seeing the Czech Republic guys, you know, win a game against Japan. It's pretty mm-hmm. unlikely, but you know they could. There, there's a lot of great stories in this, and uh, the Netherlands has already won. The fact they won a game already, I think they're kind of like upset darlings. Great Britain, I think there's been some shatter that Great Britain is like they want to play Team USA. They're ready, and there are some people who think they could pull off an upset. Pool C is is pretty deep. We'll see about that. Team Israel was a great story last time, so who knows what they could do? That that's also a very tough ass. You only get two teams out of each pool, and these pools are incredibly deep. By the way, I just want to give a shout-out to Mark Blakemore, my buddy in London, who is a native of Britain, who's become a big baseball fan. I met when I was out in London in 2016. I got to meet with several uh, baseball fans, including members of the world of, of the British Baseball Federation. Uh, they're trying to make it grow there. It's, it's, in its, it's in its infancy there, but bit by bit, you know, get baseball going there in Great Britain. Um, I'll tell you another thing I find interesting. Uh, beyond it being a potential, uh, you know, uh, showcase for, you know, national pride and possible gaining interest in certain countries and showing off some of the big stars, it also can be a, a training ground for careers beyond playing. The manager of Team Puerto Rico is Yadier Molina, mm-hmm. who was, you know, obviously uh, all-time beloved St. Louis Cardinal. Whether or not he's going to make the Hall of Fame is up for debate. I think he has an interesting case. I don't think it's it's a lock, but he certainly is someone who is beloved St. Louis Cardinal, of their number retired in St. Louis, and maybe add to his resume by eventually becoming the manager of the Cardinals or somebody. Well, he is getting that managerial experience, at least his first round of it, here in the World Baseball Classic. And I don't think that's a small thing. Yes, I mean, there's been a lot of poo-pooing about the managerial's importance by people who are, you know, simply uh, analytically driven. But I completely think that having the experience of juggling a pitching staff, you know, making the on-field decisions beyond just what is being faxed to you from the front office. I just dated myself by saying facts. But uh, having that experience, and certainly for someone like Molina, who has all the respect of the world all throughout baseball, no matter where it is, I think it's, you know, I think he's eventually going to be a major league manager. And it would be interesting to see if this was step one towards that direction. Yeah, that is an interesting story. I really, I didn't think about that until you brought that up. I mean, the game, the game management's different. Like there are rules about how many pitches you can throw and there are teams that are setting guidelines out there. So maybe some of that stuff's made for the managers, but really I think it's going to be get these guys to pull in the same direction, right? Like these guys are all, they're all from the same country and they're all playing for the same reason. Obviously it's pride, but I don't know. Just you know, team USA, like, you know, Mark DeRosa is a first time manager too. He's been talked about for different managerial jobs in major league baseball. Hasn't gotten one yet. This is his first chance. So, you know, is he going to be looked at as a guy can he pull, you know, all these stars, Mookie Betts, Mike Trout? I guess it's not hard to, to manage Mike Trout, right? He's pretty easygoing. But, you know, all those guys in that roster, can you pull them all together? Can you get them to play as one versus individual superstars? Uh, did you know who the, the, the manager is for Team Israel, by the way? I didn't know this until now. I did not know, no. It is Ian Kinsler. How about that? Wow, no kidding. Yeah, he is the manager over at, uh, at Team Israel. That's, that's actually a more interesting roster than I thought originally. So, you have a good point. There's a lot of first time managers and I, it'll be interesting to see how he gets these guys on the same page and ever, and kind of blends the roster together. I mean, there's a lot of talk about lineup construction and you know, where do you Mookie Betts is going to lead off for team USA. Like how do you put the, the right lineup together? How are you going to get guys to perform in an early season when it's not typical? So you're right. There'll be a lot of stuff based off of maybe managerial decisions too. 
uh, manager of Team Canada. Do you know who it is? Uh, I do not. Off the top of my head, wow. Uh, former Toronto Blue Jays star Ernie Witt. Who's okay. A star yeah. the, in the, I remember Ernie Witt very, very well when he was a manager of the uh, uh, – when he was a catcher for the uh, the first really great uh, – Toronto Blue Jays team, of course, and of course, who's managing Team Italy? Mike Piazza. Mike Piazza. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, that'll be fun. You know, I mean, look at I, 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 I hope I, I was a big Piazza fan when he was a player. I have no idea what he's like as a human being. He seems like you know he certainly was beloved in New York when I lived in New York, and um, I would like to see Piazza maybe manage. What the hell? What the heck? Why not? You know, who can, who can, who can root against Mike Piazza? I'm sure someone can and everything like that. I, I don't know who the manager of Great Britain's team is. It's, uh, is it? Drew Spencer, Drew Spencer. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. There's, uh, um, I had to see if my friend, uh, uh Mark Blakemore was one of the coaches or not, because maybe that, <laughs> maybe he would have, he would have qualified there. Um, the Netherlands manager, Hensley yeah. Mullins, yeah. Hensley Mullins. And I, I've yeah. been screaming. And by the way, everyone, fans of this podcast, line up the drinks. Start doing the shots. I've been screaming about uh, uh, Bruce Bochy's lieutenants deserve a managerial job. And right at the front of the line, Hensley Mullins and Roberto Kelly should be managers in Major League Baseball. And uh, Hensley Mullins is managing the World Baseball Classic team, and that's great. Uh, he should have a managerial job in the majors. By the way, uh, I who is the Panamanian manager? Um, I gotta look that. Um, yeah. I gotta look that up. It, Luis, oh, Ortiz. Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz. Okay, so it's not uh, Roberto Kelly, who I also believe should be a major league manager, uh, not just for his wonderful career was a multiple All Star. But uh, was do a shot, Bruce Bochy's lieutenant. Yeah, we're here with Justin Lada. Justin, climb the Justin Lada. Hey, uh, Justin, um, and you will be on here in the regular season. We'll talk all things Cleveland baseball and everything like that. Um, what well, I got a prediction. Um, I mean, look at the easy pick is to take someone like you know Japan or Cuba or Dominican Republic. Um, uh, does Team USA have a real has a, have a legit shot at this? And who of the remaining teams do you think is going to be a, uh, if you will, a wild card? I, think, I mean, Team USA has got a shot. Their lineup is as loaded as anybody's, right? So I think they're going to be fine. Though, I don't want to say they're, it's going to be easy for them to get out of pool play, but I, I think Great Britain, unfortunately, is going to be a little overmatched. Mexico is really good. Uh, so I, I think USA should get out of the out of pool play. I actually, I'm a nerd. I did a bracket and you know, it's March. It's, it's, it's time for brackets. Um, I actually have Venezuela beating team USA in the quarterfinals. So Venezuela is really good. And like I said, they have a history of kind of, uh, underperforming in the tournaments. So we'll see how that goes. But I think Venezuela's roster is really good. Mexico's roster is really good. I, I do think Dominican Republic is going to wind up winning. And I just feel like they're too good. I actually have, the Dominican Republic and the Ven- and Venezuela facing off in the finals. So that's going to, that would be a lot of fun because those who two you, countries who, have a lot. Who of do you have Venezuela winning the semifinals against in the semifinals over team Japan? I know that's a tough one. I think Venezuela's can do. It. I mean, Japan, Japan is really good. They're stacked and yeah. they have some of the best players, but if Venezuela can really pull this thing together, like they haven't been able to in years past, I think they're going to, I mean, that roster is just, you see in the outfield. I mean, You've got Ronald Acuna. You've got Anthony Santander, Miguel Cabrera. This could be Miguel Cabrera's like major last run if he has right. a great time out there. You got Luisa Rice, Jose Altuve, uh, Sal Perez. Like you've got a lot of good. Their pitching staff is as good as anybody. It's Hazel Cesardo, Pablo Lopez. Um, yeah, it, it's it's a good roster. So I, I, you know, like you said, we'll see if uh, that coaching staff can p- kind of pull them together. I get. I, and I haven't done all the analysis you done. A lot of this is just gut check and just sort of looking at things and looking at past history and everything. I, you know, if I were going to go fan duel and put my money on the World Baseball Classic Championship, I'm going Japan. I think Japan yeah. is going to put it together. I think they're going to have – I think they're loaded with good players. I think they're loaded with stars, but I also think they're loaded with 
uh, you know, they always do seem to do well for that reason of wanting for some of the players, this is, this is their chance to either get a big contract in you know, NPR, you know, they're in their, in their league in the, in, uh, um, in Japan or to post and to be the next Ichiro or Hideki Matsui or, or, you know, Shohei Otani or Hideo Nomo. So, um, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick Japan until proven differently. <laughs> you know, it's that's just, fair. Uh, you know, I mean, you're right. I mean, like Venezuela, Dominican Republic are always stacked. There's always people on the Cuban teams who are using this as their World Series. Um, you know, and Korea obviously has a lot of talent. Netherlands obviously has a lot of talent. Team USA obviously has a lot of talent. And if any one of those win, I, I there's no way any of us can be shocked. I'm just going to pick Japan until proven otherwise. That's fair. I mean, hey, don't listen to me. I I have Chinese Taipei going to the semifinals, and they already lost their first game badly. So I might not know as much about this as I sound like. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, whenever the, you, the more analysis you do in a sport and in a tournament is almost guaranteed to make your picks terrible. Um, I was doing... Uh, I teach special education here in Pasadena and I was having kids pick the Super Bowl. And uh, I have one of these kids who's on the spectrum in my class who doesn't at all follow football. He got almost every single playoff game, right? Including the Super Bowl. Um, And he doesn't follow football. I think he was just pointing at the helmets. Um, One year I did my picks against our fish. I had our fish in a bowl and I put the, 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 the logo of each team on either side, whichever one he swam towards was his pick fish beat me. <laughs> yeah. For now, all, all, all of is... my analysis was bested by a fish. Just so you know, we're not, we're not as smart as we all think we are. Right. I flushed that fish down the <laughs> toilet. Wow. That is a hard, that's a hard way to go. I, I think was... this is why, this is why I've never won a fantasy baseball league, despite the fact that I've been running a league for eleven years. I've never, I've never won Terrible a fantasy baseball it. league. And yeah, do you know always wins the person who doesn't follow it and made like three moves all year. Yep. In fact, I may do fantasy baseball this year and lock my team at the beginning and check up on them in September and watch. I'll run away with the league. I will run I'm, away with the league. I'm much better fantasy football, and I'm like I watch. I don't really watch a whole lot of football. So like I've that, that tracks. I've won fantasy football leagues. I've never won a fantasy baseball league. The one league I ever won ever won hockey. I won a fantasy hockey league. I don't follow hockey. I won the league up against a bunch of people from Massachusetts and Canada. That's like beating the Italians at opera. <laughs> By the way, or it's like. Uh, by the way, by the way uh, I must uh, give credit where credit is due. That line was a was uh, I stole that line from my friend Lynn Harris. So Lynn Harris, I stole that line from you because she was on a ho- she was on a women's hockey team that beat a Canadian team, and she said that was like beating the Italians at opera. I have to give credit. I was so where did I come up with that? Oh, Lynn said it. So there you go. I have to footnote. I inadvertently stole a joke from my friend Lynn, and there you go. You can follow her at Harris Linda on Twitter. Um, Justin Lada, tell people where they can follow your show. We are at, on YouTube, Lockdown Guardians, and Lockdown Guardians at anywhere you get podcasts. We are just out there, or you can follow us uh, on Twitter at Locked Guardians so you never miss an update. Thanks so much for making Lockdown MLB your first listen. Your second listen, obviously, make it Lockdown Guardians, but for your third listen, Check out Locked On Fantasy Baseball. <laughs> just like we were, we should have just segued right into that. You can win your league. Don't listen to us to win your league. Listen to Matt and Dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies, including holding up a logo at either end of a fishbowl. Find Locked On Fantasy Baseball wherever you get your podcasts on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network where it's your team every day. Oh, boy. I wonder if us talking about the futility of, podcast, of fantasy analysis was the best way to segue into locked on fantasy baseball. No, it's just that Justin and I are a couple of, you know, you know, jarheads. All right. Hey, follow our show at Locked On MLB Pods on uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast. 
on Instagram. Spanning the globe for the World Baseball Classic. There you go, doing the wide world of sports opening. <laughs> I love it. I, that he is Justin Latta, who represents the thrill of victory. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm the agony of defeat falling down the ski jump. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On MLB.